everybody for coming. Uh, I'm really glad to see how much interest is in kind of various open source technologies we have here. Uh, my name is Sonia Kisirovich. I am currently engineering manager for core system libraries team here at Twitter and Finagle is one of those libraries we consider to be core for our business. I've been working on Finagle first as an engineer and then as a manager of the team for almost three years now. So uh, in this talk, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Finagle's history, uh, some of the interesting abstractions the Finagle is built around, and then some things that I think are even more interesting, which is uh, imp some implementation and features that exist that make it super useful for us here at Twitter. And then I'll cover some future work because there's some exciting stuff coming down the pipeline. Uh, and if you're curious about any of those, how we can maybe contribute to the project going forward. Oh yes, if there's any questions, please feel free to interrupt me. I'm hoping we'll get through the slides in less than half an hour. So we have some time to Q&A at the end, and I'm also planning to stay till the end of the event, so you can always try to find me after all the presentations are over. Um, so these are some GitHub stats about Finagle. Uh, as you can see, it's a pretty popular project. It's used outside of Twitter as well. And uh, on that last image, you can see that the first GitHub comment was October uh, 2010. Um, so it's uh, almost four years old now, uh, but the work on the project itself started a couple of months earlier than that. So it is probably now four year anniversary or so. Marius would know for sure. <laughs> He's not here today. Um, so very briefly about history and why we started working on Finagle in the first place was uh, Years ago, Twitter was built first as a monolithic rail application, and that didn't scale very well. So at some point, the decision was made to decompose it into individual services. And when you decompose it into individual services, you need something for these services to communicate. Um, and for that, we needed RPC library. And there were couple of really strong requirements for this library uh, that it needed to satisfy. So it had to be open source. It had to be protocol agnostic. We need that we'll need to um, utilize lots of different protocols, HTTP, Trift, Memcached. We knew it had to be asynchronous because it had to scale and it had to run on JVM. So when we kind of discussed all of that. Uh, it turned out there was nothing really that satisfied all of these requirements just the way we wanted them. And so that's how Finagle came to be to solve all of these problems for us. And so there are some fundamental abstractions that are interesting that Finagle was built around. Um, so this is the list of uh, like more important ones, futures, concept of service, then servers and clients, filters, and on this next slide, it's a little bit, uh, uh, kind of tries to illustrate these concepts. So we needed futures because uh, when Scala was chosen as a language, uh, there was no future support in Scala. So it had to be sort of, everything had to be built from ground up. So, uh, you know, futures are now part of this library called Twitter Util, but everybody sorts of lumps this together with Finagle. Uh, then the next thing is service and service, just a service if you're familiar with Scala syntax, it's just a function that takes requests and returns future of response. And you can see immediately that's the, again, fundamental abstraction that we wanted everything to be asynchronous so it always returns future of response. Um, then the clients and servers are built on top uh, as a kind of um, uh, on a server side, uh, you kind of implement a service and expose this to clients to call. On the client side, you import the service uh, and tell it where to find the servers to talk to. Um, and then on top of that, there's this concept of filters. Um, that's, you know, if you look at the type, it's kind of 
big and complicated, but it just means it's something I can put in front of my server or in front of my client to do something interesting. And part of the big type definition is one of the interesting things can do is change a type, for example. So let's say you have a server that only takes authenticated requests, but what you are getting is not authenticated, so you can create a filter that transfers from one to the other, and then just re reuse it everywhere. So the whole kind of idea was that we wanted to build something that's very composable. Um, so if I think of some servers or clients uh, here at Twitter, they might have dozens of those filters composed all together to accomplish whatever they need to accomplish. So it works very well. So now you might say, well, you know, those abstractions, they're kind of cool, but I like these other abstractions better. So, you know, why don't you maybe consider using this other library, right? And this is, uh, this was kind of my attempt to make a list of things that I think make Finagle extremely useful in a large distributed system, uh, which are things that actually are implemented under the hood. And uh, if you kind of work in, a, in a, this sort of, sort of environment, like Twitter, you really care about. So kind of briefly around some of those, Finagle implements load balancing. You can kind of imagine simplify scenario where just you have one client talking to one server, but that's just, you know, that, that's not how um, we operate here. So we have a problem where we have every server has dozens, hundreds, even maybe thousands of instances. And the client needs to kind of load balance and uh, direct calls to them in some reasonable fashion. Um, but that's not just that, then you can imagine there's not just one client, there's hundreds and thousands of the clients as well. Um, so Finagle has a default load balancer that uh, tries to maximize for success and minimize latency. Um, and so that's a default load balancer we use here at Twitter and it's probably if you kind of want to contribute to finagle a place that I would not want everybody, anybody to start because it's really complicated. <laughs> um, but it is a pluggable, so we experiment with different type of load balancing and you know, I'll, I'll actually mention one of the experiments later. Um, we implement connection pool management in finagle if um, you know HTTP or Trift do not allow multiplexing on connections. So once you send one request, that connection cannot be reused until response comes back. So we have to open multiple connection from a client to a server. Uh, and so there's a connection pool and as with all these pools, there's management needed to make it actually as efficient as possible because connections are not cheap. Um, so there is like uh, lots of configuration and logic in Finagle made sure that this kind of work reasonably well on large scale. Uh, there's things like constellation propagation that are not often mentioned, but really important because, you know, in a large distributed system, as you make request, you know, it goes through multiple nodes and comes back and it kind of fan out to many, many different nodes. If one of these edges gets canceled, you usually want to cancel the whole thing, not to waste resources. So Finagle kind of takes care of orchestrating that as well. There's questions about service discovery, how client finds its ser servers to speak to in a large distributed system. Again, there's some abstractions around that and then concrete implementations that use Zookeeper for this purpose. Um, task scheduling, again, really interesting one, uh, really complicated, uh, you know, complex things to do very, you know, in an efficient fashion. Uh, every time you have something asynchronous computation, you know, you have these tasks that needs to be scheduled and this has to be super efficient. So this is as well part more on, like a, future, on a future side. But again, this is kind of considered a finagle. And then if you've ever troubleshooted anything in a large distributed system, you know how important it is to have enough information about what's going on. So Finagle comes out of the box with support for logging, stats exposing, and tracing. And we'll hear more about tracing part in the next talk that Jeff is going to give. So this is kind of where we are right now. Finagle is being used on all, almost all services here in Twitter. 
And so we have lots of uh, requests for improving things, make it more efficient in various dimensions. So this is just a snapshot of some active work we are considering right now. Um, for example, I mentioned that uh, HTTP and TRIF do not allow multiplexing. So we implemented the new protocol called MUX and build the TRIFT support on top of it to support multiplexing. Um, so we are kind of rolling this out right now and uh, assuming this kind of all works as uh, we are hoping to, then we can eliminate all of this connection pool logic uh, uh, because that's kind of the one of the pieces that people have really lots of trouble configuring properly. So if it, there's nothing to configure, it just works. That would be ideal. Um, one other interesting t thing about MUX is that it's designed to allow low-level control signals to float between a client and server uh, without requesting uh, support from any other protocol like HTTP on Drift. So things that we envision we can do with this is for servers to, for example, signal clients when they're too busy. So kind of implement some sort of back pressure techniques. Um, which current protocols sort of are not designed to do right now. And so the GC avoidance is one of those, or GC flow, depending, you know, we kind of call it differently, is solving a problem of, of tail latency for us. Um, you know, so many kind of requests coming to Twitter, the controlling tail latency becomes extremely important. Um, and you can imagine as the request needs to go and hit maybe dozens or hundreds of different machines to complete and return back to a user, the chances are great that some of those machines are going to go through GC. And this actually can have material impact on tail latency. So the idea here is if we can somehow guarantee that requests never hit machines that go through GC, we would have a, a really good tool here. And uh, so idea is that we should try to see if we can detect when the server is just about to go to GC, signal its clients to go to find other services to talk to while the GC is completed. We could theoretically accomplish this. Uh, as I mentioned, we are going to experiment with some new load balancing techniques. Uh, the current default load balancer we are using uses least loaded algorithm to pick the next server to send requests to. That works very well in a steady state, um, and we've been using it for years now. The problem we have is that when we want to uh, add new hosts to existing cluster, for example, since those host, new hosts, fresh hosts, by definition, have zero load, they attract a bunch of new requests. Uh, and if they're not quite properly ready to serve these requests, it might take a little bit longer because they need to warm up caches, for example, this might affect SLAs. So we are trying to kind of, again, use uh, some way to kind of signal that the host is ready to only take a part of the kind of normal load until it's fully warmed up. Um, I, if you ever work with Trift, you know there is, uh, and finagle, you know, the finagle abstraction and Trift abstractions are not really kind of uh, working well together. Trift kind of exposes multiple endpoints, where finagle considers everything to just have one endpoint. You know, request comes in, re response comes out. Um, so there, you know, there's ways to bridge this, and the current way we bridge these does not expose Trift level errors to finagle. So Finagle doesn't know if your Trift call failed or not. So if you have filters that kind of do retries, for example, that's not visible to those filters. So we're trying to bridge this gap and make it kind of more friendly, works with Trift um, errors or exceptions. Um, we're also experimenting with some better service discovery ways, like the things that we worry about are DC failovers and how we can make this like completely automated. Um, so this kind of various, there's a project kind of around this. And uh, if this sounds interesting to you, uh, there are some ways, uh, there are links on how to contribute. Um, on GitHub, uh, Travis, who was speaking initially, he's kind of our open source advocate. Um, there are some ideas. We always need new protocols implemented, like Finagle Redis was done completely outside of Twitter. You know, always better tests, better documentation, blog posts, uh, um, case studies, 
uh, we would love to get those. And so there's some uh, way to contact us and there's a mailing list as well. We are pretty active there, the whole team. So hopefully we can answer your questions. And that's it. So the question is, does Finagle work with Scala 2.10? The answer is not yet. We are working on it. Uh, I, I think we, it's on GitHub, it's already you know, compiled with 2.10. Internally, we are not ready to migrate to 10 yet. It's one of those problems where we all have to you know, be ready to do it at the same time, and we are having kind of trouble organizing, so yeah. Uh, did we consider Max uh, uh, be, uh, and not Speedy? Uh, just because of back pressure. Um, and we would like to kind of support, you know, Trift is the one that was like really, is currently a big pain point for us. And I think SPD is more like HTTP side of things. So, but yeah, so Trift was definitely kind of big for us because everything backend just talks uh, Trift. So the question was, since we implemented futures first before they were implemented in Scala, uh, but now Scala kind of caught up. Are there any major differences? And I don't think so right now. Uh, I think there was just one difference in terms of efficiency initially, but I think that was fixed as well. So in theory, we could just move to Scala's, but in practice, it's just a breaking change and rolling that out is pain in it. <laughs> okay, question was, since uh, Facebook released a new version of Trift, is there any plans to support it? Not right now. I, there's lots of work we need to do with Trift internally, and there's a kind of much more low-hanging fruit than kind of considering completely new version of Trift. So we are far away from that, but maybe in the future. Yeah, so I guess question was like, if we switch to using Scala uh, futures, we would lose maybe some of these things that we have like that flow, like context flowing through the, uh, f uh, our implementation of futures. Uh, so I don't think we consider like, like, uh, like basically deleting our implementation and just switching to Scala 2.10. I think interface wise, you know, I think they're completely now equivalent. But I don't really know, Steve might know for sure, like he's in the back there. Implementation wise, you know, would we like lose something like that or we can hook it up eventually? So I, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, so the question was, what's the area that I guess Finagle shines in and how we would promote it? I think it's really shines for a very large distributed system environment. So if you are having just few clients and servers, maybe there is like simpler ways to just kind of have them communicate. Uh, but this is in, our, in practice and so in our experience that this works with our you know, multi data center environment and lots of services where it's not only important to have a reasonable programming model, but also like very uh, like scalable implementation and like really good diagnostics and troubleshooting. And maybe Travis can kind of explain more about how to promote it better. <laughs>